Hey, Chris here, and today I want to make evergreen gnomes. Back in 2019, our McDonough County Master Gardeners made Christmas tree ornaments using items they only found outside. To accompany their tree, they made three adorable evergreen gnomes. Today, I want to show you how to make one of those. These gnomes are actually really easy to make, and you're only going to need a couple things. First, ten snips or wire cutters, and wire for the ten snips or use string instead of wire, and finally a potato for the nose. We're also going to need a tomato cage, preferably one with the ends still on it. As you can see, I cut mine off, and we'll be flipping this upside down to make our gnome. In terms of greenery, what you can use is really up to you. We have white pine right here, uh, which is very common. Then we also have some balsam fir, or any type of fir would work for this. I will be using a heaping load of eastern red cedar, or Juniperus virginiana. I'm using this because, well, we have a lot of it here in our neck of the woods. It is a native plant, and a, a good one, but it tends to grow fairly aggressively and can outcompete a lot of other good native plants. So I don't really feel that bad about cutting branches off or whole trees down for making the materials for the gnome. Because I cut these branches straight from a very large uh, cedar tree, I am going to have to cut them down to size to make them more manageable. Now, um, I will then use these and create bundles uh, to then build our gnome. Ouch, that really hurts. Uh, these are a little bit uh, sharp and pointy here. Ow. Um, yep, that's, 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 that drew blood right there. Perfect. Wonderful. Uh, keep on going there. Uh, so I'm going to keep pruning these and making little bundles here that we are going to use to then help dress our gnome. And then cut them down to length. We don't need them to be too long, even though, just know, it, once you attach them to the frame, you can always use your pruners to prune them a little shorter. And I am just going to keep on doing this. Ow, my goodness, whose idea was it to use eastern red cedar? My I think it's time to call in the gloves. And yes, much better. Uh, again, I'll just keep dropping uh, these larger limbs and cutting them down into more manageable pieces. And as we go along, just take bundles and make sure that you're cutting them to length. And as always, remember, you can make these shorter. So looking good, hopefully, yes, good. All right, so the first part that I am going to start on is I'm going to take a few larger branches and I'm going to attach those to the vertical supports of our tomato cage. And as you can see, we've turned our tomato cage upside down and I do not have the little uh, ends of the wires that you would uh, normally stick into the ground. Why? Because it's a tomato cage. So obviously I use these for growing peppers and I prefer to have the wider end at the bottom. So I cut off the ends and I use the ends to stake down the cage. Doesn't everybody do that? Who uses a tomato cage to grow tomatoes anymore? As you can see, I just wire these onto the vertical supports of the cage, and then I'm going to take some string and I'm going to tie the tops of these branches together. A little awkwardly at first, but we'll get it eventually. Come on, Chris, there you go. All right, and yeah, as you guessed it, I can't do any of this with these gloves on, so the gloves are gone, so the bloodletting has resumed. Just trim that string shorter, and because I tied them at the top, the branches kind of flared out along the sides, so I'm going to take some twine. I'm just going to tie these back against the middle and bottom rungs of this tomato cage. And there you have it, the beginnings of an evergreen gnome. Now we are just pretty much going to fill in the gaps between these evergreens. And because it is cold outside, we are just taking these cedar branches and just jamming them up into the little teepee top that we made up at the top of our gnome. And it works delightfully well to hold them in place. If you don't have enough greenery to go around the entire tomato cage, that is perfectly fine. More than likely, you are going to have probably a front and maybe a, one of the sides or perhaps both of the sides that people will see and the other part will be up against a wall. Go ahead and pick out which ones are going to be your front and your sides and make sure those are nice and full and don't worry so much about the backside of your gnome. And we were thinking that this was going to take a lot longer uh, because we would have to tie or fasten each branch to the tomato case. But really, once you start getting uh, several branches in there, they really just hold themselves in place. 
as you can see here, we are just filling in the gaps right now and trying to make sure that we mask as much of the cage as we can. And before we put on the hat, I'm going to cut some of the branches that are sticking out a little bit awkwardly on the tops. We don't want to make it look like our gnome has weird growths coming out of his head. And this will just allow the hat to slide on much easier. And we don't really worry about how it looks on the very top because we know that this hat is going to cover that up. So what we've done to make our hat is basically it is red felt uh, cut and then sewn together as a uh, Santa hat and then put some white fur or white felt there at the base and a cotton ball on the top. Once the hat's on, we then kind of see what the potato will look like, and essentially we just jam that right in there. Now later we do use a piece of wire to fasten that in uh, so that doesn't fall out, but you know, once we get the hat and the nose in there, it really takes shape. But you know what? I think it needs a beard. So I use a little bit of that balsam fir branches that we had and add a beard. And there you have it, our almost done evergreen gnome. There is one more thing that we can add to this, and so I am taking some extra red felt, and because I don't trust myself to cut this freehand, I am tracing a mitten, and then fold it over into two pieces. I am cutting out this piece of felt, and these mittens, we will then attach it to the sides of our gnome. It's going to use a little bit of wire and attach that to a branch there on the side. And making sure also that the hands are pointed the correct way. You don't want to have a gnome whose hands or arms are on backwards. And that's it. Our adorable little uh, gnome that we placed here at our front door. Uh, we tried to add a few things like pine cones for boots or things, you know, ears. But you know what? The more we added, the more unrealistic it started looking. I think kind of the simplicity of having a hat a nose and mittens is all it needs and your imagination makes up the rest. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on growing.